Welcome back to Life Beyond Bunions. We've been hearing about new surgical techniques that are virtually pain-free. And now it's time to go a bit more in depth. So I'd like to bring out a very special guest. He is the immediate past president of the Orange County Podiatric Medical Association, a diplomat of the American Board of Podiatric Surgery, a fellow of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, and board certified by the American Board of Podiatric Surgery. Please join me in welcoming the doctor responsible for all these amazing bunion surgeries, Dr. Richard Moy. I'd say you deserve that applause. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, tell me, how do you do it? You have so many testimonials. We've seen a lot of it today. Well, the procedure started back in 1991, and that's when I first started to realize that there was something kind of unique going on here. Mm -hmm. And I thought about this procedure quite a bit, and my whole emphasis was allowing to get patients to walk on their foot immediately after surgery. The pain-free thing was something that just came about naturally. I wasn't really anticipating that. And it's my emphasis to put that foot back together or that area back together so that when people walk on their foot, it won't shift or move and the bunion won't reoccur. The procedures that a lot of other doctors do will remove <clears throat> a small portion of the bunion on the side of the foot and that if a moderate bunion is just shaved off, it will inevitably reoccur. It might take a year or two, it might take more than 10 years. That is really dependent on the activity of that patient and the foot structure. Well, I'm fascinated, and we want to know more about how you do it. Okay, well, why don't we lead into some animation, and I'll show you how the basic procedure is done. Okay, I think we have a video on that, right? Okay. Okay. Well, here we're looking at <clears throat> someone's foot with a bunion on it, and that's the red area there. That's typically where the area gets irritated and sore. Now we're going to dissolve away the skin and look at where the bone's protruding and the muscles and the tendons that insert around the joint. If we take a little closer look at that area where the bunion is, you can see how that tendon and the soft tissue around it is released. Now that exposes the bunion, and we release some soft tissue on the other side to allow the great toe to move over. Now you can see that the muscles and tendons have disappeared, and we're looking at the bunion area where a red line is drawn, and that's actually where the bone will be removed by way of a very small saw. Now looking at the side of the foot, you can, you can see two small sesamoids underneath the first metatarsal. The red lines indicate where the bone will actually be cut, and a triangular shape of bone in this case is removed. Now you can see the bone has been placed back together, and now that segment of bone will be slid over slightly towards the second toe, and the sesamoids now become in place underneath that metatarsal head. There is a pin that's put in the foot as a guide pin and a temporary stabilization pin. Now you can see that the guide pin on top is now countersunk to allow the head of the screw to fit securely into the bone. That screw provides tremendous stability and compression of the bone and really allows for rapid bone healing. Now the pins are removed, the excess bone is smoothed off, and I actually smoothed off the bone now on the opposite side of the joint. It's getting polished very smooth. We don't want anything sharp to stick out of the foot. And now with that pressure being alleviated from the great toe, you can see the metatarsal moves over slightly back into a normal anatomical position. Now the soft tissue has to be reapproximated. We take the tendon, we advance it forward because we want to tighten that area up and maintain that alignment of the great toe. The soft tissue on the opposite side is released if it contributes to the bunion deformity. And those tissues will actually heal back together themselves to maintain the integrity and stability of that great toe joint. Now you can see everything's healed internally. Now the skin forms 
And that's your final result. That's just the basic procedure. Right. But I will tell you is that every procedure and everybody's bunion is a little bit different. So I don't apply the same exact technique to every single individual patient. Every procedure is really designed around that person and that person's foot. I mean, a bunion deformity might as well be a fingerprint of that person because everybody's bunion is just a little bit different. And I choose procedures specifically based on that patient's whole makeup of their foot. So can you share a few results? Sure. Well, why don't we take a look at some photos of some before and afters, and I can show you some of the different types of bunion deformities that we may see. Okay. Now here we're looking at somebody with a bunion on their right foot. We're going to see that same person shortly on their left foot. But basically what I just want to draw your attention to on this patient is their skin. You can see how nicely this patient's skin is healed. And we go to great lengths, really, to make sure that each patient has minimal scarring after surgery through a actually a special plastic surgery technique that I was taught. So that's the same person's foot, but their left side now. And this left foot obviously has a very large bunion. You can see how much pressure the big toe is applying towards the second toe, and pretty much on so down the line. And these toes we'll find, we'll see shortly how they can react differently based on the amount of pressure the big toe is being applied to it. Well, let's see what the after photo looks like. You can really see how nice and straight the toe is. We can see how the skin is healed very nicely on this patient. That's primarily what I want to show you, is just the skin heals very nicely on most patients. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to look at one that was rather interesting. This lady actually is from England, but uh, if you see the size of her bunion here, it is actually very large, and it's very large on x-ray too. But not only is the toe angled in this direction and sitting on top of the second toe, but it's actually rotated. It's actually sitting on the side of the toe right now. It's been rotated or twisted in this direction like this. Well, just three days after surgery, I took this photo right here, and now you can see how nice and straight the toe is. You can see how the rotation of the toe has been taken away. I've actually taken the toe and twisted it in this direction. So not only is the bunion gone and the toe straight, but we've actually rotated it and taken the pressure away from the second toe. So let's look at the next slide. This patient here, as you can see, waited obviously a long time yes. to have their bunion corrected. And they've been living with that bunion for years out of fear of having surgery. Right. And this lady was ecstatic to hear that something could be done for her foot that would allow her to walk immediately virtually pain-free. So if you look at this patient's foot, we have a, a serious problem here with the second toe crossing over the big toe. You can barely even see the toenail. It's amazing. I always wondered how she got her toenails polished. But anyway, <laughs> that was a tricky part for me to understand. The surgery wasn't too bad. Anyway, so this whole segment of bone was obviously removed and then slid over, uh, refashioned back. I did take a wedge of bone out of here, actually a fairly large size to decompress the joint to straighten out the toe, to derotate it. An incision was made here to loosen that joint here to allow that toe to reduce. And now we can really see what the after effect of that foot looks like. Oh. <laughs> this foot here is still about four to six weeks out after surgery. She still has some swelling. That will minimize and fade completely. But what we really want to appreciate is just the alignment of, of the foot and how straight everything looks, and you know that's the way it's going to be. Okay, and the reason why I wanted to show this one here is because people have bunions that stick out on the side, and they also have it here up on top of the joint, which is like a bunion, very similar to it. You can have both problems, one on top, one on the side, but the ones that occur on the top can be a little bit more debilitating with respect to the patient's ability to bend their toe up. And so it will jam tremendously, further degenerating the joint, creating more arthritis within the joint. Let me tell you, if you show me somebody who has a bunion for a few years, I can show you somebody who has arthritis in their joint. It's just hand in hand. You will see some cartilage degeneration as a result of the deforming forces that are creating this bunion. But in this particular patient here, what I wanted to show you is that we're going to show a picture of the patient while they're still on the operating room table. 
I just got done sewing up the skin. And that's what you see right there. You can see the little thread that goes in the skin. It gets woven back and forth and comes out in this direction right here. And now we're ready to bandage this patient's foot up. But what you also notice is that there's no blood. And the reason why there's no blood is because that patient had a tourniquet wrapped around their ankle, which prevents any blood going to or from the foot. Now that tourniquet can be left on for over two hours, but this procedure takes roughly 45 minutes. Uh, in this particular case, the patient's foot will be dressed and then the tourniquet will be released. And now all the blood really rushes back into the foot. So we're going to see the patient back three days later. And this is what you typically see. A little bruising, a little swelling. But again, the nice thing about this patient is that they're able to walk on their foot immediately. No casts, no crutches. They had absolutely no pain. And they actually drove right back into the office. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, I have to take this opportunity because I'm going to be a little selfish here. I have a secret of my own. I have two bunions. And my right one is worse, in my opinion, than my left. Would you mind looking at it? Not at all. Okay. Let me move this. Well, yes, Kimber, you do have a bunion. And as you can see, a bunion right here is an outgrowth of bone there on the side of your foot. Let's take a look here. This is where the pain generally associated with bunions occurs. A lot of times it can come over here as well. I like to evaluate the range of motion of the joint to make sure it's smooth and fluid, that there's no crunchiness or crepitation occurring within the joint. And, you know, how much snappiness does that tendon pull over? There's a lot of things that I can look at a foot within a matter of two minutes and surmise exactly the, the procedure that I perform for you. And um, a lot of it has to do with the soft tissue elasticity, which yours is very good. Some people, their skin is so tight that it actually stiffens up the joint a little bit. But uh, looking at your foot, I think you'd make a great surgical candidate. Um, patients that want to have surgery have to go through an extensive um, history and physical. And so we don't just treat the patient's foot, we treat the patient as a whole. We need to make sure that their past medical history is good, they don't have any allergies, what types of medications they're taking. We don't want the anesthesia or the surgery itself to interfere with you as a person. And so we go through great uh, lengths to make sure that you are a, a surgical candidate by being very healthy. I'm convinced. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, our time is up, and now we all know that very little stands between us bunion sufferers and life beyond bunion. We want to thank all our guests and audience members today, and also thank Dr. Richard Moy, without whom there would be a whole lot less happy feet. So if you're suffering like I am, I hope you'll join me in taking the first step toward a rich and active life beyond bunions. I'll see you in the OR. <laughs>